Good afternoon, fabulous nerds, and welcome back to MWC here in Barcelona. It's midway through day two of our four days of live coverage here on theCUBE. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. Dave, how are you feeling? Oh, afternoon, feel good. day two? No, I was just saying, we're getting punchy, it's day two. I know, I feel like we're getting, Which a little, is fun. we're getting a little zesty, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen next, folks, be sure and stay tuned. This panel is going to be absolutely action-packed and I'm super excited. We are talking about something we have yet to talk about at the show at all. We are talking about Open RAN and our guests, Satish and Anand, two of the most important people to talk to us about it today. Thank you both for being here. You are CUBE legends and veterans over many years. You're, you're on the show almost as much as I am, Satish. <laughs> it's <just> awesome. <laughs> uh, why, what? What is the open RAN landscape, and I'm going to take this to you first, here at the show? I mean, this has got to be the intersection of all the players. Yeah, uh, thanks for having us. Uh, really nice being here. Um, if, if you really look at uh, the technology landscape, especially in the, in the telco space, uh, we're sitting in an important tipping point. You know, the, the, the technology has not changed as much over the last two, three decades We've as it has this a lot you know, this week. done. Yeah. Uh, and and um, the whole disaggregation of the stack, you know, between the antennas and the RUs and the and the BBUs and the CU, and the disaggregation of the software and the hardware piece of it is completely changing the dynamics, right? It's it's um, it's creating some greater opportunities for telcos and some challenges as well, right? Opportunities such as you know being agile. Right, being flexible, you know, driving down cars, right, creating market uh, differentiation, all great opportunities, right. But when you have a disaggregated stack, it drives complexity as well, right. Absolutely. And, and ability, you know, and, and therefore the need to integrate better, you know, and, and need to kind of design your networks better, uh, address security challenges. All of that, you know, is is part of the conversation today, right. And and we. We're looking at in the in the adoption curve. You know, Open RAN is still in the infancy stage. Very early, right? That's going to be one of my yeah. questions. Yeah. So, actually, let's step back just for a second, in case the audience isn't aware. What is Open RAN? I feel like everyone's familiar with radio access networks, but w w why Open? Why is that such a big difference? Well, um, it is like Anand was saying, right? It is about picking the best in class technologies and disaggregation. So, to me, this is about cloud and cloud transformations, finding the telco domain, right? And yeah. it's been going on for a while. Uh, I know our CEO, Michael, talked about it yesterday. Yep. Uh, you know, Dave, we were talking to him as well, right? I think it's basically transformation coming into telecom, right? And when we say open, you know, the way I think about this is open basically means pick the best in class tech and to solve a problem. And if that means that you have to pick and choose a bunch of things to integrate, so be it, right? And one of the main things, and you, you know, uh, I want to point out is a lot of the technologies are actually coming together, right? Yeah. Um, the collaboration the silicon is diversity so cool. is here now, yeah. right? We all talk about it right. now. AI is here now, right? The compute power is here now. Uh, you know, the level of wave sophistication of data on cloud yeah. is here now, right? So I think, in order for some of these transformational things to happen, a lot of these things start to come together, right? So I think this is probably as better time as any because we can see all this mac massive changes happening and all this. I think this is that basically brings you know gives a great opportunity for things like open. Access. I mean, when you hear, when you hear the word open, okay, you know, so yeah. open you think open distributed API scale collaborative innovation yeah. collaborative, and and then there's always a little bit of risk, and so yeah. and that's kind of the dynamic here, right? I mean, yeah. the other day I go into work, I had SOS. I'm like, hmm, funny, had to restart. We all, sort of, many of us in the East Coast have experienced it maybe yep. across yeah, the yeah. nation. You know, but it's still, and then you heard, well, it was a glitch um, in the system. You really didn't know, it was sort of opaque. But the reality is, is you really didn't notice. It sort of came back, mm -hmm. right? It recovered. The thing's never down, which yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. So that is something that is part of the dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be a no risk environment, but yet all those other things are so alluring. The open, the scale, the innovation, the collaboration, yeah. the APIs, the developer, all that piece. So that's an interesting balance, right? Yeah. So, when? <laughs> right? What do you guys see as that adoption curve? Is it a, is it a decade long? More? So, uh, I, I personally think, you know, it's, it's about uh, 
I started saying this, you know, I truly believe we are in the infancy state. The first and the most important thing is standardization. Yeah. Right? Uh, organizations such as, you know, the Open RAN Alliance or, or the, the telco infrastructure project, the work that they're doing is going to be fundamental, right, and, and critical. So if you ask me, I think, you know, we are, we are about, yeah, uh, eight to 10 years, you know, of, from a adoption, complete adoption cycle, right? If you draw a curve, right. you know. It's a journey. Can, yeah, it's a journey. It's a great, yeah. that's a great business that, that tells me. It's a wonderful business. You're not going to get the, the big returns up front. We, as we talked about this with Michael, yeah. we're playing the long game. He, he, yeah. he told a great story. He said, the telcos came to us and they asked for, for, for better hardware, yep. better systems. Yep. So we said, or cheaper. We said, here you go. And they said, well no, we need special systems. <laughs> we need, you know, they have to, we have telco special needs. He said, oh, well, you didn't tell us that. So we had to go back, yep. develop those. So that's a long cycle, which means maybe initially the returns aren't there, it's not a quick hit, but long term, it could be a really big sustainable business for you. Yeah. I mean, the, the adoption is there, right? I mean, uh, you saw um, the gentleman from AT&T standing on the stage with Michael and talking about Open RAN, right? So we have big, big operators. Dish uh, is another one. Have, Dish was right. one of our strategic partners in the US. So Dish has been working with Dell for the last three plus years, uh, building up an Open RAN, Open Network from the ground up. We also have other big players. We have Telefonica, we have Vodafone, right? We have a lot Vodafone, of big yeah. players actually now driving this. Uh, again, the bigger one you saw in the you know the traditional players is AT and T, basically saying that we are committed to Open RAN and we're going to partner with you know Ericsson, we're going to partner with Dell, right? As a that's big, so right? That's, that's big huge. Big, right? Because Dish, you could say, okay, Dish is trying to disrupt, yes. trying to develop applications, yep. and they have to because they're coming from a you know not AT and T's at a position of strength. They don't have to, yep. but they they kind of do have to. They have to, don't they? True. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like Ethernet, you kind of have to. <laughs> Yeah, you do. I'm curious, so we talk about building the best in class, that's the reason for open, which is great. Not a word we, I'm just thinking about open, it's not a word we associate with telco very often, which is an interesting, fun game to talk about. What are some of the challenges for you guys in, in this? I mean, probably new people collaborating, who knows, Anand, I see you nodding, I'm going to you. Yeah, um, it, it's critical to kind of you know identify what are those challenges, and in my opinion, there are about two or three important things. First of all, open, and therefore, you know, it, 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 the disaggregated stack means there is complexity, and therefore, you know, just the whole integration, the design of the network, you know, has, has got to be bang on, right? You know, number one, that's that's super important. The second is you got to, uh, you know, you got to understand the the security elements of it. Dave spoke about it, right? You know, the security is going to become super critical. The third is interoperability, right? Yeah. You know, that's that's going to be a critical as well. And doing all of this, you know, without impacting the quality of service is what is going to be, uh, is what's going to be critical to make make this, you know, go up the adoption curve, so. Yeah. No, I agree, I mean, look, fundamentally, when you talk about open, the, you know, uh, Dave, like you pointed out, right, companies which, who are really good at doing what they do will do that really well, right? Then the next question is somebody has to stitch it all together, right? Exactly. Because you are buying best in class of everything, right, in an open ecosystem, right? Best software, best infrastructure, best compute, best radio, right? Then somebody has to say, okay, how all the best comes together, right? right? That is a challenge, right? That's an opportunity for some companies like Dell and HCL to work together. Well, so a really smart CEO that I, I respect, I won't say his name, said to me one time, you really want to understand if a market is attractive, look for the SIs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because Become. when they get in, that means There's money it's there. big. <laughs> they also said they like to eat at the trough. Which, <laughs> it's true, it's a big market, right? <laughs> I, 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 I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah. so who who so said that I. is a smart guy? <laughs> Ever since then, I was like, hmm. We're, when the SIs come in, it means it's a meaningful market. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example. So, and I, for instance, ServiceNow. For years, the, the SI ecosystem was tiny and then all of a sudden, yeah. boom, it came in. And so, what role do the SIs play in, uh, yeah, in this? Um, I think SIs are in a very, um, I would say, central position of, uh, on this because all the four or five challenges that I mentioned, right, are absolutely great areas where we can go in and provide services for our customers to, to overcome. 
right? Ability, so what they're asking an SI, you know, such as us, is ability to kind of take the best in class products, help them put that together, right? And drive an outcome, right? You know, run those operations, meeting those SLAs, right? And, and you know, large SI such as us can kind of do that, and that's where the true opportunity is. You know, it is, it's a challenge, but you know, it's a great opportunity. I heard something today earlier, and I'd never heard it before, because we talk about outcomes all the time, and this individual who's from a telco said, we were driving for an outcome, but we're also trying to make that outcome yeah. of, of sustainable and, and, and as experiences. Yeah, that stuck with me as well. Right, I'd never heard that before. So Neither. it's outcome, we all want outcomes, and then it's, it's thinking long. The customer demands a different experience now. It, right, and and, and, and it's exactly that to outcome. your point, it's and that seamless end-to-end it. -end experience. They want it yeah. fast, they want it now, and they want that same quality of UX that they've had in these silos across systems, which is really interesting and actually brings me to my next question. What, how is the culture of collaboration with the different groups that you're working with? Um, I can go and no, yeah, go, so, for it, go for it. So I, I think one of the critical elements we've not spoken about yet is ecosystem and collaboration. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The That's power fun. of the ecosystem is going to be super important for uh, open RAN, right? You customers want us to have an opinionated point of view of what the who the eco how the ecosystem looks like and who in that ecosystem is going to do what. Right, and ability to get that together, you know, and and clearly drive a program around Open RAN is going to be critical. Satish, no, I I agree. I mean, look, I, the 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 whole open basically means it's an open ecosystem play. Right. right? So, um, you know, telecom companies want to solve a lot of problems about the stack, right? Um, and the, you know, by bringing in a strong system integrator and a strong infrastructure telecom cloud platform provider. Right? Then you are actually opening it up for all these application providers to come and validate, test, and bring those outcomes to the table. So I absolutely think consistent experience. See, in, in the cloud, we always talk about, you know, in the cloud world, right, when you have the hyperscalers, we always talk about how do you bring the cloud experience on-prem, right? Yeah. So this is very similar, like how do you bring the cloud experience, easy button, right, yeah. into a telecom world. I think that's that's basically what this is. So well, you know, it's interesting. Sorry, oh interrupt. No, please. You know, the, the cloud came in yep. and sort of disrupted the, the on-prem legacy businesses with this idea of, um, how did Jassy say it, undifferentiated heavy lifting. And what happened was, you guys got good, you know, guys kind of slapped around in the face and said, well, we got to have a better operating model. Yep. And we can do that. And of course, that IP leaked out, that mindset leaked out, and now you talk to IT, they go, well, the cloud, we have a cloud right here. It's the same thing, yep. as, I mean, same experience. It's substantially identical. And people can debate that, but it's, yep. it's True. pretty much the same. That telcos haven't transformed yet, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they're largely on-prem, right. right? And yeah. so, it's the different dynamic now yep. when the, versus 2010, when the cloud was really right. taking off. Right. Do you agree with that, that, that assessment? I do. Not that the cloud's not going to play a role, it is, but but there's more of a balance, I would say. Uh, absolutely, I completely agree with that. Um, you know, if you really look at, um, I'm just going to take a step back and to your point, we are now seeing that that recalibration of workloads, you know, all over the enterprise and telcos, right? Uh, gone are the days where you know everybody just said cloud is my only path out. Now today, you know, everybody's looking at the workloads and say, tell me what's the best place to yeah. run it, because. From a commercial model standpoint, you know, you, you, you can yeah. kind of make it work, right? And we see the same thing, you know, again, from a, a open RAN standpoint, cloudification is going to be a super important thing. Satish? No, I look, I, I'll, I'll add to what uh, Anand was saying, but you know, one of the main things we got to think about is, we, Michael talked about yesterday, right? The notion of cloud, cloud experience on-prem, one of the main thing is data is gravity, right? And now we all talked about AI. We've been talking a lot about AI, right? He talked about AI as gravity, right? And telco companies have a very important message because telecommunication companies are at the edge, right? When the decisions are to be made at the edge, those decisions have to be smarter, that has gravity, right? So you have to make those decisions there, right? So I think 
it's truly multi-cloud world, right? Uh, we always like to say that decisions are made like in a very you know, uh, distributed environment, but I think in telecommunication world, it's, it's even more so important that it is going to be a very multi-cloud world, right? And, and I'm glad you used the word, I think you said recalibration. Yeah. It's, you know, a lot of people use the word repatriation. Uh, recalibration is a better term, because that's really what it is. It's not like, oh, we do it from here to here, we're no. going to move back. No, it's more, okay, let's it's balance it out. Yeah. Yeah. More of an equilibrium. True, true. And, and that's, that's what we're seeing across, across the whole, um, both enterprise and telcos, where there is a strong point of view around workloads and applications, right? Determining both the network requirements as well as you know, where it's going to reside and what's going to run, right? And especially with generative AI now, you know, and, and because of security concerns, because of other things, right? You know, governance. Now, now you know, uh, truly, uh, organizations are saying, hybrid is the way to go. And, and even though, if you take the current workload numbers, it might be slightly, slightly skewed to the hyperscalers, long run, that's what we... Well, it's going to be interesting to see, because we've, we've talked about the power law of Gen AI, where there's a long tail. You've got a lot of big models that are dominant, and then you, but you have a lot of smaller models yep. that are domain specific. Yep. Many of those we think are going to be on-prem. I think, you know, one of the debates we're having is, okay, but remember the cloud in the early days, everybody said, no way, not going to go to the cloud, it's not secure. It, the debate is, is the same thing going to happen here? They're initially, they want to do stuff on-prem because it's more safe, it's more secure, yeah. it's more trusted, it's sovereign. I think it's different this time because of the data. The, yeah. Michael's point about you know, data gravity, we talk about that, we throw that term around a lot, but it's, everybody is right when they say we're going to bring the AI to the data. Yeah. You're probably not going to say, okay, let's rip the, a, the data out, put it in the cloud, and then bring the AI there, unless you can't deliver the tooling. So that's the challenge. You've got to be able to deliver the tooling, and that's substantially similar cloud experience, and the tooling capabilities, and what you're doing with the, the coheres and the llamas, and right. you know, all the other. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the processing, cleaning, and the indexing, and the vectoring of the information, right? Unstructured, structured. There is a lot for, for organization to consume that in a very you know, meaningful way you know, within an AI model, right? So to your point, for a lot of the reasons, whether you have a general purpose LLM, but you're going to, to make it specific for you, you're going to take your data sets which you already have within your enterprise and leverage it yeah. for the most part, right? And that, that's, where, that's where the power of the AI, where it belongs, comes in, right? So you, it, it gets closer and closer to where the enterprises are and that makes it more useful. So, I would imagine when we hear, you know, a year from now, we're going to have a very similar conversation, and then, and then one of these years, I don't know, maybe it's five or six years from now, we're going to go, yeah, we told you, it did happen, right? <laughs> and it's going to, we're going to have that momentum, that part of the S-curve is really going to be, yeah, see, absolutely. but it's sort of inevitable. Yes. You can see it coming, you know, everybody wants it to come, they know it's coming, and it's just, you know, that pace is, the pace is di dictating the pace. Yeah, right? I agree. I mean, I'm curious, you see across verticals, you talk to a lot of different customers between both of you. Are you seeing any remarkable trends that you can share with us? Of, like, uh, who's excited about Open RAN, or say really eager to be one of these ecosystem partners with you? You want to go? No, go for it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I think few verticals are definitely uh, leading, in my opinion. Uh, manufacturing is is right up there. I can see that for um, sure. You know. Right. So, um, number one. Num number two. Um, interestingly, we we also seeing a lot of lot of interest in uh, life sciences and healthcare, right? You oh, know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in and um, uh, we we doing um, doing a lot of, and this is going back to the whole idea of adoption of Open RAN, we're seeing a lot of requests for doing uh, POCs, right? And ability to have, yeah. and I spoke about ecosystems as well, ability to have that whole stack, you know, as part of, you know, testing it out and figuring out the performance optimization. So, but, but then manufacturing is a big thing, you know, manufacturing is a big thing, I would say. Oh, it makes sense. I mean, throughput and supply chain and everything else is such a huge topic and the ability to do it better and more efficient yep. with all of your edge locations, depending on where your so factories are, is a exactly. absolute Exactly, edge, IOT, yeah. you know, yeah. all of that is kind of in, and that is kind of really coming together and making sense from a return on investment, business impact, so on and so forth, so. Yeah, so just what about you? No, just to add, it's basically around low latency, right? Yeah. Super, or near super high bandwidth, right? and really, really smart, quick, intelligent decision making. That's it, right? 
So all of the use cases are going to be centered around those characteristics, right? It's as simple as that. Is there anyone that gets you particularly excited as a person, not just as a professional? Uh, as an individual, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like uh, I like to find restaurants much faster. Yes. Okay. Oh my gosh. We were we. I really want to do a segment while we're here in Spain. Now that I'm saying it, maybe it'll happen. I want to use AI to help us find the best tapas. Exactly. And 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 have that be one of our little tasting segments. Yeah, especially for a vegetarian, I would really like them to know what I want. Give me the smartest. I love that. What about you, Anand? Anything that gets the the you the little the human inside you, not just the brain, but. Um. On, on what what I like in, in terms of uh, what you're most excited about, like to your point, I love that. Like I would love to find restaurants food. faster. That's food. a great example of how all of this complex text we just talked about is going to enable a wonderful user experience. Yeah, exactly. For, for us. me, that's the best place I can get the best. Experience. Be, being on a being on the road like four days a week, uh, anything that'll help my travel, make it oh e God. easier. Amen. You know, I think I think you know I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> Seriously, Amen, I feel you. After 232 days on the road last year, Oof. I could not agree with you more. Also, when is my my suitcase going to pack itself. Just pack yourself. <laughs> Just I don't want to do it anymore. So much of my time spent putting clothing in cubes. Satish on so much, so wonderful to have you on the show. It's why we bring you back over and thank over you. and over thank again. Thank you guys. Dave, Dave, fantastic Dave. questions thank as you. always. And thank all of you, our fabulous Cube community, for tuning in all week here from MWC in Barcelona. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for emerging tech coverage. Mm -hmm.